November 27th year 2001. Following article. Taken from Neo3 website Dry Suit Manufacturers. Thought it might interest a few people in this group. Cheers. Under pressure a world record dive, Sabang Beach, Puerto Galera, Philippines. The delays were starting to wear us down. This was the third morning, there'd been a last minute cancellation. We sat around in Captain Greg's, looking at the weather and feeling sorry for ourselves. It was 7 a.m. on the 4th of June. The last three days had all begun at 3 a.m., and the combination of sleepless nights and early starts was beginning to take its toll. Jim Noble sat typing another email explaining the delay to some of the sponsors. Jim's help had been vital to getting the series of divies this far. He was the event organizer, and had helped enormously in raising the funds needed. Jim and co-supervisor Noel Godfrey, who had flown in from Wales in the UK, both had more than 20 years' experience in the physical training corps of the British Army. Their attention to detail would be important to our success, and my safety. It had come from years of running military diving expeditions. Chuck Driver, owner of Captain Greggs, my former deep ocean depth record partner, would this time be part of the support team. In 1999, we had broken the 153 meters, 500 feet mark four times on divies together, and our 200 meters, 656 feet dive was, at the time, the deepest oceanic dive ever completed. It was bettered by Barty Vesta, who set a challenging 225 meters, 738 feet mark later the same year. As with previous record divies, Axel Lowered would be the first diver I would see on my ascent, meeting me at 122 meters, 400 feet. Axel had worked incredibly hard preparing the dive support platform with Tom Tom, and they had made several stability improvements on last year's design. Although the dive would be a solo dive you the 1999 joint dive with Chuck, we had decided to keep to decent lines, this time with periodical pipes between the two lines. The second line would give us a working line for the team and provide me with a second reference point, hopefully minimizing the chance of disorientation. Darren Ball would meet me at 91 meters, 300 feet. He had worked with me on Mark Andrews' deep air dive. I knew him to be a calm and very good deep diver. During the build-up his common sense approach to things helped a lot as he worked to ensure the arduous task of mixing tanks was completed. Mark Cox was also with the team through the training, all the way to the 155 meters, 506 feet training, but unfortunately he would not be available for the final dive. Jorge Marx, another close friend, was also working with us again. Like many of the other team members, he had sacrificed a lot to be here. His support diver role would take him to a depth of 140 meters, 460 feet, shattering his native country's Portuguese record. George's dive made me realize how lucky I was. The experience level of the team was stunning. Seated around me that morning were some of the best deep divers in the world. Now all we had to do was put it all together. Other team member commitments meant that Tomorrow would be the last opportunity for the attempt. This type of pressure was something that I had tried disparately to avoid. Jim Bowden, who had doved to 282 meters, 925 feet in the Zakaton cave system, still the deepest open circuit dive ever completed had warned me to avoid time and media pressure. But now it was there. The rest of the day was spent checking and rechecking the equipment and mixes. I tried to stay away from most of the checks, concentrating instead on my mental preparation. The delays had started to drain my energy, so I left the team to it, and went home to my family. Like most of the team I had another restless night and for the first time questioned why was I doing this. Upon waking both the weather and my mood had improved. When I arrived at the shop Noel, Jim, Axel and Tom Tom had already left with the platform and the rest of the team loaded the tanks, making sure the only thing I needed to do was dive. The trip to the site was about an hour, further than I had thought, 
but we were rewarded with a beaming Tom Tom. The countless workouts and weeks of training were over. The O3 Drashoot donated by Sean and Kevin made getting into the six tank set up hot work. The dive was also to be a test for the suit. Without it the four degree bottom temperatures waiting for me would quickly sap my strength and coordination. But I had to be careful not to overheat in the 28 degree surface waters where I would spend most of my time decompressing. This meant the normal thick undersuit was out. Noel ran through a checklist, making sure that all members of the team had their mixes positioned correctly. This seemingly mundane chore and disciplined approach to the divies was one of the factors which ensured the success of the project. I rested and composed myself on the surface for 10 minutes and also used the time to fit the helmet that had to halcyon flashlights attached. I carried to other flashlights, both Pinston Tech and unlike previous divies, where lights had either imploded or flooded all the lights performed well. I would have preferred to carry a primary light as well, but despite all the glamorous advertising you see, I could not find a company that was willing to risk their light. Jorge was next to me on the working line. He began his descent a few minutes before me, his role being to check my first gas switch, and then wait in case there was a problem in the early stages. <laughs> 